Hi there. My name is Leslie Shebley, and I am one of the co-founders of Kairos Public Schools. I am also the director of our Flex-Based Academies. The purpose of this presentation today is to give you a brief overview, maybe about 15 minutes, um, about our new Kairos Luminary Academy High School, or CLAWS as we like to call it, it's our acronym. Uh, we get a lot of questions about who we are, what our program looks like, um, and so we want to attempt to answer those questions in this brief presentation for you today. So it gives you a little bit of information to go off of um, and learn more about us. So we're going to go over all that in hopefully about 15 minutes. So I want to start with who we are. This is uh, something that we get questions about a lot. Who are we? So CLAWS is an academy of Kairos Public Schools. Kairos Public Schools has been around for, I think this is our currently our 11th school year. However, we have never served high school scholars before. This is our first year serving high school scholars and the Luminary Academy is our newest academy. We are a public charter school open to all students. And we're going to get into some myths about that later on. Um, I won't bore you with all the details, but for those of you who maybe have heard that we only take certain students, that is not the case. We are a public charter school funded by the state of California, and we absolutely accept all students as long as we have space. And I'll talk more about that later. So Clausa is our college-like hybrid high school. It is called a hybrid high school because it is exactly what it is. We're, we're kind of formed like a college model in that scholars have the option of choosing how they want to complete their high school classes. And I'm going to get into that as well. This is our first year of operation in this academy. Uh, we currently in the 24-25 school year, which is the school year that I am recording this in, we have ninth and 10th grade scholars um, at our academy this year. Next year, we'll, we will be adding 11th grade scholars um, in the 25-26 school year. And then after that, we will add each year. So scholars who are with us currently in ninth or 10th grade will be able to complete high school with us sh should they choose to do so. Um, also, we have a facility. This is something that's also uh, some misinformation going around. And I'm gonna touch on this in our next slide when I talk about who we are not. Um, we are also a school of choice. That means that we're not a neighborhood school in the traditional sense. Um, we live in neighborhoods and sometimes there are schools in those neighborhoods, but Kairos itself, all of our academies is considered a school of choice, meaning that parents search for alternative options to their traditional maybe neighborhood schools or local high schools in our instance, and they wanna find other options for their scholar and that's who we are. Uh, we are a school of choice. So let's talk about who we are not. So Luminary Academy is not a traditional homeschool program. We get that a lot too. A lot of people think we are a homeschool program. We are not traditionally that. There are pieces of our program that are reminiscent of homeschool, but that's not who we are. We are truly a hybrid model, and I'll talk more about that soon as well. Also, we are not a virtual school. Again, we have components of our program that are virtual or can be virtual, lending more to an independent study model, um, but we are not an all virtual school. Also, as I mentioned, we are a public school. We are not private. That means you do not pay to come to any of our academies, Luminary Academy included. Um, we are not a private school. Oftentimes people think of charter schools as private schools. They are not, in fact, private. Charters are illegal in California, so you will actually never find a private charter school here in the state. Um, the other thing that people think sometimes is that we are a part of the Vacaville Unified School District. We are located in Vacaville. However, we are not officially a part of VUSD. Um, it's a little bit nuanced in that Vacaville Unified School District authorizes us to exist as a school. However, they don't govern us. That means that their governing board, the Vacaville Unified School District Board, does not govern 
Kairos. If you go to the Vacaville Unified School District or the VUSD website, you will see all their schools listed. Kairos will not be one of them because while we are authorized by them to exist, we have our own governing board that governs our school. So the money comes directly to us from the state per student, just as if you choose to send your scholar to a traditional high school. One of the local high schools here in Vacaville, maybe we'll see Wood or Vaca High. Um, your money that is allocated for your student follows that student to those schools, and it's the same for us. If you come to us, the money follows the, the scholar and they come directly to us. We manage our finances, we have our own back office, we do not do any of those things through Vacaville Unified School District. So, in that sense, we are not part of the traditional school district. Also, something to note, and I'm going to get in more to the nitty gritty of what our program offers, what it looks like on a weekly basis for scholars, but it's really important to know right off the bat, we are not a traditional five day a week, seven hour a day in person high school. So the way most people think of it, you go Monday through Friday, you may be there 8.30 to 3.30 every single day. That is not how we operate. However, again, I'll point back to my first point. We are also not a homeschool and we are not a virtual school. We are truly hybrid. It takes the best of both worlds, best of the traditional model, best of the, you could say, homeschool or independent study model and merges them together. So let's talk more about that. So what do we offer? So uh, CLAWS offers scholars, as I mentioned, a hybrid school experience in that they can take their required classes to graduate all of their high school courses through us, and they have a choice on how they do that. And we're going to get into those different choices that they have. So for example, we offer what we call center classes. So these look very much like a traditional high school in that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we have some class on, on Wednesdays, and the next slide will also go into that. Um, your scholar can take math, science, social studies, English, and even a few electives at our center. However, those classes are only offered on Tuesday, and Thursday, and again, some classes on Wednesdays. So we do offer in-person instruction, but we also offer virtual classes, which leads me to my next point. Um, our virtual classes currently, we offer through Imagine Learning Ingenuity. Some might be familiar with it. The school district uses it as well in certain schools. Um, we, we don't have all of the electives that we plan on offering at this point. So what our students do if they have an elective that they want to take is they take a virtual option. We also have students who choose to be fully virtual. They, they want to do more of an independent study model and they actually have that option. Um, we also offer college classes um, through us called dual enrollment classes. In fact, this semester that I'm speaking, I'm currently in fall of 2024 as I'm talking to you, you might hear this at a different time. But this semester we have our financial literacy course, which is considered a dual enrollment class. So one of our teachers teaches it. However, the students enrolled in that class also get college credit for that class. Next semester, one of our classes for dual enrollment will be public safety. Um, we will, I will talk more about that as that fits into our uh, CTE pathways that we offer to students. Uh, we also have some students who choose to take certain classes through Solano College, perhaps a language or one of their electives. And this model allows them to do that because it gives them freedom and flexibility to take classes the way they want to take them. I mentioned CTE pathways. Currently, what we have is biotechnology and public safety. What a pathway is, is in any school who offers a pathway, it means that a scholar throughout their high school career will take at least two classes in that pathway. So a public safety could be if they're interested to be a police officer or a firefighter or anything along that line, they can take these classes to kind of dip their toes in the water and figure out if this is something they want to pursue post high school. They will also have the opportunity, for example, in the public safety realm, this will be this class offered in the spring for us will be a dual enrollment class with Solano. So they will get their high school credits as well as college credits, which goes a long way once they get to college. 
Biotechnology is another pathway. Most of those classes will be offered primarily to juniors and seniors, but they will take two classes if they choose that pathway in the biotechnology fields. And this is one of uh, the other pathways that we offer. We plan on building out more pathways, but this is something that we offer now. We also have sports programs. Um, as I speak next week, we are being voted into CIF, which is necessary to play high school sports. We also have an information meeting scheduled and we will be offering a couple of winter and spring sports this school year. And we will have all, not all sports, but all uh, seasonal sports that we can offer with our student body who is interested. So we do offer sports. There's some information that we don't offer it. That isn't true. It's just we are in our launch year and we are in the process of building out our sports programs. Um, but those are forthcoming. We have a student leadership or what we call at Cairo Scholar Ambassadors. In our middle school academies, we have Scholar Ambassadors. They act very similarly to a student leadership and they help set the culture of the school. They are leaders in our communities at the schools. So here at Luminary Academy, we have a Scholar Ambassador class. They are working on planning all of the events coming up, school dances, parties, um, get togethers, banquets, all of those kinds of things um, we will have. And I, I, that leads me to my next point. We are currently planning a winter party banquet for our scholars, as well as a spring one as well. And the scholar ambassadors are the students who are taking ownership and taking charge of that to have these important high school events that many high schoolers look forward to. So we offer many of the traditional things that a traditional school offers. We do it in a little different way and we are building these things out, but all of these things are being worked on. We also offer clubs to our students. In fact, we have two student-led clubs that are about to kick off within the next few weeks and any student who is interested in having a club can do that. Um, also, breakfast and lunch. This is any public school. We offer our students when they are on campus. If they're here in the morning, we have breakfast options free to them. We have lunch options free to them. This is something that we actually partner with Vacaville Unified School District um, to do. This is a way that we do partner with them, although uh, we are not one of their schools, as I mentioned. They partner with us to provide really great meals for our students for free. So this is something that when they are on campus, they would have access to. All right, so you might say that's all well and good, but what does a weekly schedule look like for a hybrid high school? So for example, Mondays, we do not offer in-person classes. Now that doesn't mean that scholars do not have work to complete. And I think this is the biggest piece that many people have a hard time wrapping their minds around because they're not used to it. They're either used to full-on homeschooling or full-on traditional in-person school. This is truly a combination. So I'll skip around on this slide, but if you look at Monday and Friday, we do not offer right now in-person classes. So what students are doing during Mondays and Fridays is they're primarily working on assignments. In their center classes, if they have them, if they choose to go in that direction, they will be given assignments on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, and they will have to complete those assignments, whether it's those same days in the afternoon or they choose to do them on Monday or Friday. That is the way that they gain their attendance. At traditional schools, it's in education, what's known as butts and seats. But for a program like ours, attendance is generated by work completion, meaning that they need to complete their assignments to get attendance and to stay in good standing. So this is the one thing many of our students who come from traditional models had a hard time adjusting to was recognizing that it wasn't just about attending classes and doing classwork and that was it. While if they choose to do center classes, they do need to attend them. There's gonna be some classwork, for example, if they're in biology, they may have lab work to do while they're there, but then their teacher will be giving them work to do, similar to homework. Not many schools give homework these days. So it's basically like that, you can think of it that way. So Mondays and Fridays, there are no in-person classes, but they have assignments to complete and they can do that anywhere. They can do that at a coffee shop. They can do that at a home. They can do that at a library or wherever they go. It is not a four day weekend. It is just 
free days, as we call them, but not free because they're continuing to do assignments. So let's move on to the rest of the week. So Tuesday and Thursday are going to look very similar for a student who chose center-based classes. For example, Tuesday and Thursday, you'll, if you look at this slide, you will see um, that they look very similar. They will attend center classes. So maybe they're a ninth grader and they're in integrated math one and period two, English nine and period three. And then they chose a speech and debate class as an elective and they're, they attend that on period four. But then they have fifth period lunch and sixth period where they actually don't have a center class. So they're here on campus, they are completing work, they're seeing friends, they're having lunch, but that's what that time is used for. They might have what many of our students are calling their free period. And technically they can use it as a free period to socialize, but most of our students need to get work done. So they sit out with friends, they're on their computers, completing virtual assignments from their virtual classes or center class assignments that their teacher has given them. Wednesdays, we do offer some classes. For example, in this fall semester, we offer PE. This is also when our Scholar Ambassador Center class meets and we have financial literacy. Wednesday afternoons, there's study hall. So this is an option for most scholars as they can choose to come into study hall. They can get help from their math teacher. They can get help from their English teacher or their academic advisor that they are assigned. They can get help from all of those people during study hall time. They have access to that help and that support during study hall. They can have it at other times as well if they negotiate that with their teacher, but this is a great time for students to come in, work with other students, and get work done. So you can see that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday can be pretty busy and very look very much like a traditional model, but Mondays and Fridays, those are days where they're working independently. All of our virtual classes assign work daily daily during the week, of course. So Monday through Friday, if they are taking, for example, an elective class, maybe they are taking a photography class, they will have to log in daily and complete the assignments that they are given. In our center classes, they will be given assignments for the days they are not there and they will complete those. So it really does model a very similar model to traditional, but it also takes the best parts of the freedom and flexibility of more of a homeschool or independent study model and merge them together. We call it college-like because when you think about college, oftentimes you sign up for classes that are on Mondays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then you're given homework assignments. You may have a reading, you may have an essay, you may have a project that you're working on. Our model is very similar to that. So if you want to think of how it looks, Think of college and college classes, and that'll give you a pretty good idea of that. So let's talk quickly about the common questions that we get. People call us all the time and they want to know more about us because we're new and that makes sense. But the common questions are what are center classes like? Similar to traditional classes, they're assigned in periods. So Tuesdays and Thursdays look very similar to what it would look like at a traditional school. They have second period, third period, fourth period. They have a lunch period and they attend those classes for 55 minutes. They are given instruction by their teacher. They do assignments, work in groups, all of those things. So that's essentially what a center class. It looks very similar to a traditional high school class. How are vir virtual classes structured? Well, I just mentioned that before. You, the student receives a login and all the classes that they choose on their homepage, they click on it, it will tell them, hey, today you need to watch this lecture video and complete this quiz. And then they will complete that for the day. The next day they log in again and it says you need to read this source text and maybe you have a writing assignment that you have to do. It kind of depends on the class, um, but everything is in there. They are managed by their academic advisor, which every student gets when they first come to Luminary. They are managed by them. So parents, they will get updates, but parents aren't required to oversee their virtual classes. And I think that that's an important point. We want parent involvement. Parents need to come to monthly meetings with academic advisors, but they aren't the ones responsible for those classes. Um, can my scholar take all center classes? In theory, yes, but because we do not offer all the electives that might interest a student right now, many of our students 
take most of their classes at the center, and then maybe they take one or two virtual classes. And oftentimes those are electives, but sometimes they're their core classes if they don't want to take their core classes, which are math, science, social studies, and English. If they don't want to take those at our center, they have the option of taking them either through Solano Community College if they choose, or they can take them through our virtual program. Can scholars take all virtual classes? Yes, they can. We do have a few students with us this year who say, hey, we want more of an independent study model. We don't want to come to campus. They can choose that 100%. Will my child have help if they need it? Absolutely. I mentioned those academic advisors. While students will have teachers specific to the subject area if they choose a center class, we give them what is called an advisor. And an advisor is like their person. The advisor connects with the student on usually a weekly basis and definitely a monthly basis and goes over how they're doing in their classes, offers them help, um, tells them about any intervention services that they might need, all of those things. They have so much help in a program like ours. It's very customized and personalized to the scholar, and they have a lot of voice and choice in how they learn. Uh, can my scholar play sports? Absolutely. Now, we are a small school and we are a startup school, so we don't offer every single sport that scholars want. But as I mentioned before, we are building those sports programs out. How do I apply? So you can go to our website um, at luminary.kairospublicschools.org. In fact, there will be a slide. The next slide will have all of that information. And you can go on and apply for this school year now, the 24-25 school year. And then open enrollment will begin for our 25-26 school year, which will be next school year. It will begin January 1st. And there will be lots of social media posts and all of that to talk about those things. But if you have maybe have an eighth grade scholar or you're fine with where your scholar's at right now in ninth or 10th grade, but you may be interested in this option for next year, remember next school year, we will have ninth, 10th and 11th graders for Luminary Academy. You will be able to apply during our open enrollment period, which starts January 1st. Uh, where are we located? So we do have a facility. We are located at 850 Sunflower Street in Vacaville. It's kind of on the outskirts of Vacaville, but we are in um, the building that I am sitting in is currently our K-8 flex-based academy. But across the parking lot, we house our Luminary Academy. And so that is where we are located. All right, so if you want more information, um, you can go to our website, luminary.kairospublicschools.org. That is specifically our high school website. You could also email clauseinfo at kairospublicschools.com. And that is our um, email address. I actually think that that's, it's .org, by the way. Uh, that was a typo. You can also call our phone number, extension three. We also have two social media platforms. We don't use these as official forms of communication, but if you want to see pictures, if you want to see video of events that we've had, please head over to Facebook or especially Instagram. We do lots of highlights. You can find out more about us and see what classes look like, all of that kind of thing. So I hope that this has helped as you're thinking through if this is going to be a good option for your family or for your, your scholar. We will be offering in-person information meetings during our open enrollment time in January. But until then, this might be a great way to know more about who we are. Thank you so much for joining us.